there are two scenes in that movie that I feel like are are almost masterclass in terms of their effectiveness. The first being the scene with uh, the two of them in Alex Rocco's office, and he's talking about thinking his wife is cheating on him, and this dog that's from down the street, and the, just the and, the and the interplay of the two of those with, with the two of those guys with Alex, and you not being sure if he's like I'm gonna kill that kill that guy, and and you're like oh he's talking about the dog, and you're never sure what he's talking about. And then the other scene is the one between Alan and Valerie Harper, which is just so stunning because the whole scene is about him thinking that he has caught her in all these sort of lies and half-truths, and, and she has a, an answer for every one of them that's much more reasonable than any of his unreasonable sort of sense of outrage. How do you... Are, are, do those scenes, are those scenes conceived uh, like already on the page or, or did those require a lot of interplay of, between you and the actors or or on or, or on set because again like you know I, my girlfriend and I watched that scene in the in the in the chief's office and we we're just like this is like a brilliant demonstration of how comedy can unfold and and you know and it doesn't seem to happen as much today in, in that way well there are two answers first of all I commend you I couldn't agree with you more on your choice of scenes. I feel that the scene with, uh, with uh, Bean and his wife is a masterpiece. Uh, they were so good in it, but basically the scene is so well written. Uh, that's one where it was a well-conceived con idea executed brilliantly by two great comedians. And the idea that he is trying so hard to nail her and, and falling in love with her because she's clever enough to trick him and get away with it. He's really impressed with how smart she is. And he's becoming very affectionate over that. It's running counter to all of the ripples that you've stirred up in every direction and a very strong element of the scene that it really is a love. A love scene. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is a tribute to the improvising genius of those two guys. The scene was written, all the key lines are there, but for every key line there are two improvised lines and pieces of timing and repeats and hesitations. There are five for every line written that make it it's such a memorable scene. Three excellent people working together. Um, I was wondering if there, if if you knew if there were any plans, or or you you were involved in any any plans to um, sort of put put out a, a DVD or, or a Blu-ray for Color of Night because that's a movie I, I know that was like sort of your last uh, fiction film. Um, had, or you know, are you eager to revisit that experience or the film? I, I, I would be eager to revisit it if it were put out in my version, which the video was. Uh, uh, I didn't have final cut on the film, and we had a huge battle over it. I lost. I actually won the battle, but lost anyway. <laughs> and the wrong person, the version of the film was put out. But I had won a minor battle of getting video put out in my version. and. Whereas the film got bad reviews because it had been slaughtered in the cutting room. Uh, the version I put out, I asked three of the top critics in the world to review it again. And they saw it, and the three of them gave it raves. And the film lost money, but the video did well. So there was some minor compensation in that. I knew I would be left holding the bag if the bad version was put out, and it was. But that was a consequence. Anyway, yes, I, I like, I very much like my version of the film. And it's a strange and interesting film. The idea that, that attracted me in it originally was there's one person in the group therapy session. No, everybody in the, in the group therapy session is having an affair with the same person but nobody knows it. And it, that includes the psychiatrist at this point. So it was a funny idea. 
and a very interesting idea to evolve. What 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 is the difference between your version uh, that I guess was released on on video and the theatrical cut? I mean, I I, I saw the, the the film in theaters when it first came out, um, but I admit that I haven't probably seen it since then. You, if you haven't, you will like it a lot better. <laughs> it will become possibly an important film to you, whereas it couldn't have been as it was put out. You know, it had some amusement to it, but my style in the film, which is not infrequent for me is every scene is a joke. I mean, it's, it's designed as a joke with a tagline at the end that takes the story off in a different direction. The producer of the film meticulously went through and cut out all the punchlines, tagline of every scene. So it turned into one big shaggy dog story without a punchline. And that's what was wrong with it. Uh, they, it was, there was some clever writing in there where a scene would be very interesting in itself and then develop a coda which went off in another direction in a kind of a memorable, very intriguing way, a sexual way or, or some other way. Was there, uh, because that movie came out, I mean, it certainly came out around the time of when the sort of psychosexual thriller was sort of a, such a phenomenon. What, was that something that you sort of entered into it knowing could be a possibility that it could be changed into this or was that something that was really a surprise for you at the time? I, I didn't think of it as a part of a genre. Hmm. I thought of it as, as a nice original idea and uh, uh, like all naughty boys I always want to make a sexual film. It's fun and uh, uh, it was a good mystery story with some very unique twists. Uh, the basic twist is your central character, a girl or a boy, and you don't even face that question till the third night. How was it working with Jane March? I mean, at that point, she was, I think, just coming off The Lover. Exactly. Um, and so, and so, in that sense, she was like sort of a, like what we would consider like an indie actress, sort of making a jump to sort of more mainstream films. How was that? Was that? Any, I mean, I'm sure that part of the appeal of having an actress like that was her sort of fearlessness and being willing to do whatever the role required in terms of nudity or sort of sexual content or whatever. But um, it certainly was, mm -hmm. particularly since that petite, early twenties young body was one very appealing uh, in that state of disrobe. <laughs> uh, she was wonderful to work with actually. She had done a good job in The Lover. She'd gone a little crazy because of it because she had not been off of the British tabloids for one day since the film mm -hmm. and it had been I think a couple of years. And actually it made her a little crazy during the film. Suddenly she rebelled in the middle of the film and didn't want to do nudity anymore. And it was uh, kind of a hardship considering the nature of the film and what had been established as a style. But she got over the madness quickly and, and was a very daring and, in a sense, self-sacrificing actress. In a way, she went through some very difficult times to, de to deliver some very difficult scenes. Uh, and I was very proud of her and admiring of, of the result. I think it was almost a perfect piece of casting. I can only imagine uh, how difficult